But when you get into this guy's Substack and you kind of start hearing about the stuff that he's talking about, you start to realize that maybe uh, just because he did work at a couple tech places with a couple of uh, you know desirable titles, that maybe he wasn't such a sane person. Basically, I'll just read you like the first couple of paragraphs because it's a very loaded substack. Once we read the first couple of paragraphs, I'll kind of break down the substack a little bit and hop around to tell you what it is that he was trying to get uh, across to people. So he writes, my name is Max Azarillo, and I am an investigative researcher who has set himself on fire outside of the Trump trial in Manhattan. This extreme act of protest is to draw attention to an urgent and important discovery. We are victims of a totalitarian con, and our government, along with many of their allies, is about to hit us with an apocalyptic fascist world coup. These claims sound like fantastical conspiracy theory, but they are not. They are proof of conspiracy. If you investigate this mountain of research, you will prove them too. If you learn a great deal about Ponzi schemes, you will discover that our life is a lie. If you follow this story and the links below, you will discover the rotten truth of post-truth America. You will learn the scariest and stupidest story in the world, and you will realize that we are all in a desperate state of emergency that requires your action. To my friends and family, Witnesses and first responders, I deeply apologize for inflicting this pain upon you. But I assure you, it is a drop in the bucket compared to what our government intends to inflict. Because these words are true, and this is an act of revolution. If you were a normal person reading that, you might think two things. If you read that without context, you would probably think one of two things. You might think, wow, that is a fucking fire opening monologue. Who wrote that script? Or you might think this is the manifesto of a fucking crazy person. And not that I want to pick sides or anything, but from what I've read in this manifesto, I would probably be leaning towards the latter. So Max goes on to basically say that a lot of the the uh, the banking crashes that happened in March with those two banks that were primarily funding uh, crypto companies and tech companies, those two banks that crashed that caused a little bit of a scare in the financial uh, sector of the economy. He's basically saying those types of events are all tied to cryptocurrency at large and that the elites of the world, not just America, of the world, created crypto as a worldwide Ponzi scheme and are using it to basically funnel money to do the things that they see fit to inevitably take over the world in a fascist world coup. He basically goes to try to justify these claims by uh, saying that a lot of people and the certain foundations that are involved with Bill Clinton and a lot of billionaires like Peter Thiel and, and his venture capitalist firms and other venture capitalists, they're all deeply tied within cryptocurrency in general. Not just Bitcoin, not just Ethereum, not Dogecoin, Shiba, it's not all of it, the whole thing, the whole concept of it. The generalized thought of crypto was something that was created by the elite. He goes on to say that it's our first multi-trillion dollar Ponzi scheme. He goes on to say that those bank crashes in March of 2023 were intentional. He's basically saying that the banks were used to move out stolen Ponzi money and that this signals that they're no longer dumping cash in to keep the cryptocurrency Ponzi afloat. And that it'll, it'll all soon go insolvent as most Ponzi schemes do. He also goes on to say that when this Ponzi scheme goes insolvent, it's going to take down half of the stock market, crash half of the whole thing. Basically, he's saying that the perpetrators use their major companies to pipe into the blockchain so that they could funnel money out from the crypto exchanges. 
He's saying that the companies that do this include Google, Tesla, Apple, PayPal, Facebook, Disney, Walmart, Target, InBev, Zoom, and countless others. What the fuck is InBev? I've never even heard of that company. But this is something, so this is something uh, that's a, a little bit of a scary thing when it comes to conspiracy theories is because Normally, people try, they, they tend to be like uh, contrarians at heart. Whether you think so or not, you, you, a, a lot of times people, they want to be like individualistic. So they tend to like not want to go along with like the popular thing or the big companies or stuff like that. Another thing you could say is that most people would tend to like to see the big guy fail, like these big companies that I'm talking about now. So when it comes to these types of conspiracy theories, it's easy to to get people's attention or to kind of draw them into the conspiracy by saying, hey, you know Apple, that big company that you don't like so much? They're involved. You know Google, the tech giant, that that they're laying off people and, and they're, they're making this AI that's fucking, uh, it's making black Nazis and Indian forefathers and, and stuff like that. It's woke to death. They're involved. Zoom, Tesla, they're involved. PayPal, they're involved. It's once you start saying these kinds of things, because at this juncture, you you kind of can't prove that. Right? Especially if the blockchain works the way people think it does, where they say, oh man, you buy something with crypto, it's untraceable. It's untraceable, right? So if it actually works that way, it'd be very hard to prove this kind of thing, at least right now. So could it be that these companies are actually involved? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. But could it also be that this guy is using these names to to have like a a, a kind of a almost clickbaity, attention grabbing type sentence in there to kind of get people to to go along with this? Hey, I also happen to hate Apple. Hey, I also think Disney sucks. And this guy's saying that they're involved in some multi-trillion dollar Ponzi scheme. Fuck them. Like, so that's that's all I want to say about that when it comes to some of these points. You have to really slice this with the fucking thin knife. You know what I mean? However the fucking saying goes. Yeah, you got to split hairs when it comes to this kind of stuff. So, I mean, I'm not trying to necessarily completely debunk this guy's like manifesto or whatever, but I'm just saying. To, to make videos and say like, oh, this guy was a completely sound mind and body just because he had jobs is not necessarily the most rock solid statement. Because guess what? Ted Bundy held a job for a long time. You know? John Wayne Gacy owned a company. So what are we, what are we saying here? 